If you enjoy those isolation games that are filled with frightening monsters, and if you like some Metroidvania action, then Angel's Gear may be something you're looking for. You play as a soldier who teams up with some unlikely allies to destroy the mechanical disease called Gear, which has seemingly taken over the universe. It's up to you to destroy the large creatures scattered around the Godhead dimension and to put an end to the mad deformed scientist named Heathcliff. But to better see if this could be a game for you, tune into my thoughts on Angel's Gear. The game begins with some inspiration from D-Day, but know that's not a bad thing as there's a giant dragon that devastates the entire world right off the bat. This in my opinion was a great way to set the tone by immediately throwing you into isolation rather than a battlefield. Now you're not in total isolation as there are some NPCs that can help build the story or they may provide you with some health upgrades if you can find certain items throughout the world. However, besides the main area, you are in complete isolation when traveling through the different areas. Each section is completely atmospheric and doesn't really have much of a soundtrack which I kind of wish it did, but you can hear the screams of the monsters much better without it. You'll also find at least one new enemy in each of these areas, however, there's not a surplus amount of variation overall. I'm not one for horror games, so playing this in the dark and hearing some of these enemies was scary to say the least, but nothing was more frightening than these one-hit kill enemies. Something I'll say is that when you get to this section of the game, it's much better to run than fight. Also, if you find yourself running down this hallway, definitely do not stop. No specific area stood out enough for me to say I enjoyed it more than the last, but the gears rotating in the background was a nice touch to have, and you can be rewarded with health, weapon, and or ammo upgrades for traveling off the main route. Angel's Gear functions fully as a Metroidvania, and you need to unlock certain abilities before moving on to the next section. However, once you reach the second half of the game, you may go in any order you choose. That being said, there are some occasions where you will find yourself in some unfulfilling backtracking. However, you can cover ground fairly quickly, and it's a good opportunity for you to explore areas you haven't previously been for some upgrades. Now, the gameplay definitely stands out as a differentiator than your typical Metroidvania. The combat is based around some precise aiming and dodging your enemies, but I think one of my favorite touches here is that you can stomp your enemies out reminiscent to Dead Space. The enemies also explode like they do in Dead Space, so I think that just adds to the satisfaction of each kill. I played this with an Xbox One controller, and the controls definitely took some getting used to, but once you get it down, it does feel great. You're able to switch bullet types and weapons, however, I found myself loving the shotgun which you unlock after defeating the second boss. I think my primary gripe with the combat is that there isn't much reason to kill enemies unless you want some bullets. You can slide or jump your way by and it really doesn't make a difference on if you choose to engage. However, you can play the game any way you choose to. You definitely want to use your bullets wisely as once you run out, you will be desperate to find some more if you already used up your heals. I found myself in a plentiful amount of situations where I was feeling pretty helpless which is not what you want in this type of game. Angel's Gear isn't an overly long experience, but it has enough content to keep you satisfied by upgrading the soldier and exploring new areas. I think something that I was initially worried about was the lack of challenge and engagement in boss fights. However, once you get to the second one, you're greeted with some amazing music and an intense battle which carried on throughout the rest of the game. I didn't find any of the bosses to be overly challenging, however, they weren't easy by any means. You truly get to face some disgusting looking monsters, and I think it's very fitting that almost all of them have a one hit kill attack. This one will carve you up, and this one will take off your head. Most of the bosses involve continuously shooting them while also sliding to avoid their attacks. Depending on the boss, you might want to use your shotgun for close range, however, sometimes it's necessary to use the handgun. I also enjoyed the unique designs and slight backstory that each boss had, such as the Womb Weaver, which was the creature creating other monsters. I know I haven't spoke on it much, but Angel's Gear does have some story elements that are given to you throughout dialogue, which did help immerse me within the game better. Something I found to be satisfying was the music that went along with these fights. As I mentioned, the game is primarily atmospheric, so having these soundtracks really helped intensify the battles. For example, this track did not need to go in like this during the second phase of this fight. Angel's Gear is a Metroidvania at heart, but it also has some horror elements as well which shouldn't surprise any of you. The game has its flaws such as the lack of reason to kill enemies and the occasional backtracking. However, if you're looking for a title that has some enjoyable boss fights, a very dark and isolated setting, and some precision based combat, then I do recommend checking out Angel's Gear. It's not the longest experience, but it's enough to keep you satisfied and to fulfill that itch for a darker game. 
I want to thank the developer Scumhead for letting me try it out early so I could get this review out alongside the release date. I hope you enjoyed listening to my thoughts, which is basically just a fancy way of saying review, however, I like to talk about the little things within these games. If you're a fan of indie games, or like hearing in-depth gaming analysis, then go check out and subscribe to my channel as you can expect to find plenty of similar content. So until next time. Thank you.